Well guys, as you can see, we've taken up the challenge and we're going to face this war games facade that AK Interactive has prepared for us. To make it a bit different from others who've done it, I've added a styrene sheet floor imitating panels and other elements. I've also used AK Interactive styrene sheets for everything else. I've added bullet impact marks on the door made with AK Interactive green body and used some leftover elements from other kits. The first thing we'll do before starting the work is to remove the movable parts. We've divided the scene into two parts, the floor and the wall, with some kind of hinges to make the attachment easier and to avoid accidents later on. And we're going to start by applying a grey primer to the entire scene. We've placed our scenery on a sort of a holder to paint it better and we're starting to apply our primer. We'll do this with the airbrush. As I mentioned, it's a universal grey primer, which will help us set the subsequent layers of paint and unify all the materials we've added. The dilution will be 50-50. Well, as you can see, after priming, we have the same color and the same starting point for both parts. This way, all the elements we paint from now on will have the same tone. And using the black primer, we're going to apply pre-shading to the piece. This will help emphasize the depth between the panels and create a sense of relief. We'll use masking tape as well as some cardboard as movable mask to help us out. The process of pre-shading is very simple. I'll show you three examples, using a permanent mask, a movable mask and no mask at all. This is the area that is attached to the wall, which we can pre-shade without any worry or risk. I've marked where the wall ends and will pre-shade and create the effect of the wall shadow on the floor. As you can see, we don't have to be overly careful. In the area of the robot, since the robot casts a shadow, we can add shadow. In the area of the permanent mask, to mark that panel, we use tape as a barrier. And we apply a slight shadow of the panel on the floor. And in the case of the movable masks, what we don't want is to stain this panel. So we can apply a light shadow on the step with our movable mask. As you can see, we've done a very simple, quick pre-shading to save time. And now we're going to start applying a greenish color. We'll begin with reflective green. Dilute it enough so as not to lose the pre-shading and we'll highlight with medium sea green.
As you can see, by combining the pre-shading with panel lighting, we achieve a very striking effect. Our entire set is starting to make sense. And now we just need to add more detail to the scene. To do this, we'll use this tool, which is a stencil, to apply a pattern to all the metallic panels, adding more information and enriching the overall look. We'll look for an area where the pattern has a similar scale to what we're working on. We place it on top and use our airbrush to apply small sprays. We'll repeat this process across the entire surface. We've finished the airbrush work. And now we're going to highlight all the panel edges. This will give them much more definition. We'll continue with the panel outlining. For this, we'll use the color greenish-white straight from the bottle to create the outline lines. It may seem a bit exaggerated at first, but when we apply the rest of the filters, you'll see that it's the right tone. To create the outlines, we use the edge of the brush. And we can carefully start outlining. If we go outside the lines, it's okay. We can even create some chipping or scratches. As you can see, using the edge of the brush makes it much simpler to do this than using the tip. With the outlining, we have further emphasized all the panels, both on the wall and the floor. Next, we're going to create a series of paint chipping and weathering effects. For this, we'll use the color for chipping, chocolate chipping. We have our facade and a sponge, which we moisten with the chocolate brown color and then unload most of it. We'll unload it until it practically doesn't paint anymore. This way we'll have good control over the paint. Now we can start to damage the steps. Here you can see how gradually our facade has become very worn and damaged due to the passage of time. On the floor, to distinguish between the different panels, we'll use a small piece of cardboard as mask. This will serve to separate the individual panels and do it separately. It gives a more realistic feeling to have them on separate panels rather than continuing across them. And we'll continue the same way with the rest of the panels. We'll use dark wash to add even more depth to the floor panels. To do this, the first thing we'll do is set and varnish the entire surface. This will help the product slide more and allow it to seep into all the crevices using capillary reaction. With our violet wash, we'll do the same. We've shaken it, poured some onto a bit of thinner, and we're going to tint some panels. If we go outside the lines, we can use some thinner, we'll drain and remove it. We have already varnished it with matte varnish using ultra matte varnish because we won't be working with capillarity anymore. To summarize, we've used the washes straight from the bottle to add depth to the panels. 
as if they were pen liners. We've also used them diluted with a thinner to use them as filters. And now we're going to use them for their own effects. Remember that rusty areas are not clean. They emit a kind of yellowish patina, which we're going to simulate. For this, we're going to use light rust wash. It's a rust effect that will imitate the yellowish patina that appears on oxidized areas. We'll apply it both on the floor and the wall. We've taken some of the product and added some thinner to a paint cup. This will make it more fluid and the effect will be less pronounced. As you can see, the effects are very subtle. You can see the yellowish stains typical for rusted areas. But because of applying a significant amount of the product, there are some stains. To remove them, we'll use a more or less flat brush and blend them with the help of thinner. Just as we imitated the rust patina, we're going to simulate dripping rust. For this, we'll use dark rust wash. We'll use the thinner to blend the lines we've created. This way, each line becomes less evident and only the dirt dripping down remains. Here you can see the result of the entire weathering process we applied with the washes. Now we're going to simulate the fluids belonging to the robot. You can see them on the base. And we'll do this by using the still water product for creating puddles and the orange liquid pigment floor. We're going to approach it differently for the horizontal surface and the vertical one, because fluids behave differently. For the horizontal surface, we'll use a brush that's old and ready to be thrown away and we'll use it to get the liquid. It will create a raised effect. That's why it's advisable to let it dry in the same position it will be in. That is to say, horizontal. On the wall, we're going to use the product differently. We're going to use an old brush and create splatters. Now we have dried blood on the floor and the splatters on the wall. Next, we're going to apply more pigment, red floor, around the blood to simulate dried blood on the floor. Pigments are very easy to use. After stirring the product, if we load the brush from the bottom of the bottle, it will be more pigmented. But if we load it from the top, it will have less pigment. To integrate the pigment and remove what we don't want, we wet the brush in the specific thinner for pigments and blend it in the surrounding areas or remove what we don't want. Next, we're going to simulate the OSL of the red light 
on the traffic light. The first thing we're going to do is add brightness with a sort of pre-illumination using white paint. We need to be very careful. We're going to apply the color matte red, which will simulate the light in its farthest areas. We've repeated the process with white. And this time we're going to use Deep Red, which is lighter, brighter and more intense than the previous color. Gradually, with the brush, we're going to outline the edges. As you can see, with a few simple steps, we can create a very striking OSL effect on this light bulb. Next, we're going to imitate the burned metal effect on the two impacts to finish our scene. We'll start with a layer of black red on the impacts to simulate the distant lighting. We'll continue highlighting, this time using burned red, and reducing the surface area even further. This way, we're going to make the rest part progressively brighter. We continue adding light, this time with a much lighter, warmer color, matte red. We'll enhance the raised areas of our impact by painting them white in these spots. We're going to use an airbrush and a color amaranth red to further enhance the lighting. This color contains more yellow and it is a brighter red color. Just as we did before with white to enhance the edges, we're going to paint them yellow. Now with our brush we'll mix deep yellow and deep orange on a wet palette and we'll gradually increase the brightness of the impact area. Another simple OSL effect that is very effective. And this is the result of this little scene we've put together with the AK Interactive Resin Facade, using washes and liquid pigments to create different effects. We hope you like this video.